Everybody's wife or husband in charge of cleaning? Oh, that sometimes doesn't work out well, right? So, and, 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 and what about pets? Is there an issue when one child, come, one family comes in that's allergic to the dog that was there the week before with the other sister and the, right? So what about pets? What about damage? If something breaks, something large breaks, something small breaks, who's supposed to be fixing that stuff? Who can be there? Does one of your children always have to be there? What if there are grandchildren how old do they have to be before they can be there alone? How do you figure those issues? How do you figure those issues out? How many people can be there at all? And can any of those people rent? Can any of the children rent? Because once that child and if that child is renting, then what does that do to the liability of the other children in the event that something happens with one of those renters? Does that whole kind of set of issues? Now we and then finally we talked about the budget, making sure that by some early date, one of the dates that we talked about, if I recall, was like January 1st or, or February 1st, there's a budget and there's somebody in charge of that budget and figuring out what the budget's going to be and who gets charged what. And we also talked about whether there was going to be, what, what the approval process was for the budget and whether or not you wanted in your own plan to put some money in to start off by funding all of this because it's really hard if you both just died and the kids are trying to figure out the cottage and the roof goes, right, or the boiler goes, and there's no beginning pot of money to try to figure all that stuff out. So those were pretty straightforward. There were a lot of issues, and I guess the moral of the story, and I always try to talk to clients about this, the moral of the story is there were a lot of issues that you need to deal with, but it isn't an infinite number, right? So the list that I just gave you, covers pretty much, you know, a lot of, just about all of the things that people fight about when they're, you're dealing with your cottages. Except, then there's a couple that you never want to talk about. There's the rhinoceros in the room, right? Actually, there are, there are two or three of those. One is, what if people don't pet, right? What if your three kids are, you know, they each own a one-third share in the cottage, and, and somebody just says, I don't think that we really need to fix that roof yet. You know, or I, I know I'm in I'm in San Diego. You know, why should I have to pay a third? You know, and we only go in for like three days, or for or I'm just broke. You know, I'm just broke, and and so I can't really afford my share. So what do you do? So there are a couple of kind of standard ways that. And, and by the way, uh, I'd be very interested. You you have my um, website and you have my contact information on the handouts. If you've come up with some of these issues and you've got a great plan, right, or you've dealt with them, I'd really be interested in hearing from you, you know, because I think some folks have done some things that are really good. One of the things that I like about this, I find myself doing more and more of this kind of work, is finding folks that have faced these problems and have kind of figured out, you know, real sensible results. So, the, the kind of traditional answers, though, to these questions are, one, in the short run, if they're not paying, 
Well, you just say, well, in that case, you can't use the house this year, right? Or you don't get your two weeks, right? Now, I'm going to talk a little bit later on about whether you have the legal power to do that, right? Or whether you have a structure that allows you to do that. Uh, but that's one of the solutions. But of course, that's just a short-term solution, because if they don't show up uh, at the end of that period of time, the bill still didn't get paid. Right? And the, the one-third of the money that was supposed to pay the insurance and the tax didn't show up, you know. So what do you do in that case? And the, the, the pretty standard solution that, I, that, that happens across the board is there's this automatic required exit strategy, right? What is that? Typically, you figure out, you start off by saying, well, we're going, and you could have the very extreme exit strategy, which is, at the end of this period of time, you no longer own a share of the cottage. Wow, that's really extreme, right? Something a little more moderated would be to say, okay, at, at, at the end of that period of time, you're kind of acknowledging that you don't really want to be there because you're not paying anything. So what we'll do is, we'll buy you up. Of course, you know, from your other kids' perspective, that's typically a terrible solution because who has the kind of cash to buy out a property, right? So there are typically two things that happen to try to figure this out. First of all, you figure out what is the value of the cottage at the time, right? And you apply a discount. Now, the time to figure out what kind of discount should be applied in this situation, of course, is now while you're still alive, right? Because this discount is going to make is going to make everybody unhappy. The conversation I, I regularly have conversations with clients about this issue, right? Because from the perspective of the child who wants to get bought out, right? First of all, the cottage is worth a million dollars, you know. And secondly, they were always supportive before, so why should they have to take a serious discount right now? Of course, on the other side, from the perspective of the buyers, right? You know, who wants to try to find a mortgage for the cottage in order to try to finance buying out the child who wasn't paying in the first place, right? And the whole point of this, of the, of this, the, the whole po point of the matter was to save this very special cottage for the members of the family. And why, so why do we, are we rewarding the person who is not helping out, right? So that tension is tremendous. If you can solve any problem for your kids, solve this one, right? What happens? Well, if, if people don't pay or if they just want to get out. So first things first, if people don't pay, first, you figure out the value of the cottage. The question is, what is that? Now, there is the easy way or the hard way to figure that out, right? The easy way is, you look at your tax bill. You say, that's the value of the cottage. Now, of course, the tax bills are always based on the, the previous sales of cottages in the previous year. Maybe that's not a great measure. Maybe it's too high, maybe it's too low. But the nice thing about it is, it's not way too high, probably, or way too low. It's probably in the ballpark. But in any event, that's the easy way. The hard way is you act, you 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 figure out the way in which the the appraisal is actually going to get done. Either you agree that all three children in this case have to agree on who the appraiser is going to be, or you have each one of them pick an appraiser have the average appraisal. The main thing is to figure it out ahead of time. You just need a formula to figure out what the value is. The second question is, what's the discount? What's the discount from the value of the cottage um, to, to the person who, who, by virtue of not paying their bills, not paying their share, is being bought out, right? Now, I would argue that in that situation, that could be a very deep discount. Because there's a there's that's a person who was not should not have been expecting to get anything, because the point is they weren't getting a cash distribution as a result of your deaths, right? They were getting a piece of the cottage because the cottage is a special place. So if they decided to not support the cottage, then the price of buying them out should not be a hundred percent of their share. It should be something less. But you want to apply a discount. Um, then the question is, how do you pay that? Because even if you take a share and you apply a discount, you're still talking about a lot of cash. So I'll give you an example. Suppose in this case, um, uh, one of the kids decided they just weren't paying. Suppose it was Paul and he's far away, you know, and he just decided he wasn't going to pay. Or suppose it was Peter, you know, whose wife is always bugging him about the place anyway. They don't keep it up. They're wasting your money, so they don't pay. 
So you start off, you figure out the value of the card. Suppose the value is the current value, $300,000. That means each child's share is worth $100,000. Suppose you apply a 50% discount to that. 50%. So that means that child is getting $50,000 for that child's share. That's still a lot of money. So I think you finally want to put in a provision that says that the other kids have the option, not the obligation, but the option to pay that amount off over a period of time. That's the example. If the kids, if the two kids who were staying in the cottage gave the third child a promissory note, just pretend that that third child is the bank, gave them a promissory note at 6% interest, which is actually a really high interest right now, 6% interest, over five years, they'd be paying that child a little under $1,000 a month for five years. Now, that's not nothing, $1,000 a month, but it would be getting split in two, right? Because you figure the other two children would each be paying half of that, right? And at the end of that five-year period, um, that third child is owed nothing. So, that's one possible solution. The issue is, make sure you figured out a solution. So the, uh, the second rhinoceros, uh, we've done that. The second rhinoceros is one of the kids just wants to leave. Once again, he's Paul, and he's on the West Coast, and he's always paid his fair share, but now one of the kids has got college coming up, you know, and he not only doesn't want to be paying in, he needs to be taking out because he needs to be trying to afford college, right? So what do you do in that case? My suggestion would be, think about it the very same way. Think about it the same way. If you figure out now the way in which the cottage is going to get valued, think about what that discount rate is that's going to get applied to that child, or that's going to get applied for the child that just wants to walk away, right? And then figure some period of time over which the children can pay. So in this case, if you were assuming that Paul just wanted to opt out, Right? And the kid said, okay, that's fine. So, once again, each share is worth about $100,000 today. If there were a 25% discount applied to that, the remaining 75% would be $75,000. That's how much the, the other two would be paying that child over a five-year period in monthly payments at 6% interest. Now, you may decide that it's not appropriate to pay interest. You may decide that the discount is different, right? You may decide anything that you want to decide because this is your cottage, right? So you get to make all of those decisions. The point is, you want to try to figure this one out for them. 